So this is Eclipse, and usually I do a lot of lateral work, but I'm not going to do that with him. He uh, is built a little downhill. He likes to come and go really super slow, and then he gets very wobbly. So what I'm going to do is work on walking out a little bit. We still want to warm up, but I want him to walk a little bit more forward than he usually does and stay in a straight line. And then if we can do that, then maybe I'll do the circles. Okay. So each horse is different. This is a Rocky Mountain horse. He's spooking a little bit at something. So let's shorten up so we're prepared. And we just want them going straight. Okay. So he can uh, flat walk, but his mom doesn't, I think she doesn't like the back and forth motion of the flat walk. I'm not sure if it's his saddle gait that she doesn't like. So what I'm going to try and do because the flat walk and running rock have motion and that's not what the Rocky's about anyhow. So we're gonna keep him walking out a little bit and try to make sure that it's pretty smooth and up here in the saddle and there's not too much back and forth motion. So he has some now because I am going slower towards the flat walk, but it's not bad. Okay. So let's see if we can make a circle and see if he'll hold it around the circle. But he tends, when I go slow, to get wobbly, and then he kind of feels like a walking horse, not a rocky. And each horse is different. So since we're warming up, I'm trying not to do his little uh, slow racking gait off of the saddle gait. Um, I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to come right out of the stall doing that. But so far so good so I'm going to turn you off because I used a lot of battery on Zorro so I don't know how much this is going to last um, he does he's younger so he does test a little bit like do I really have to do that so he's not like a lot of the um, lazier horses he can go but if you leave it up to him he's just gonna see what he does oh, good boy now I'm sure he was taught to stop by taking the leg off so that's some of it but if I don't push him this is how slow he goes so I and then he wobbles around so I want to go faster so I'm using my leg I'm using a little bit of uh, seat to push him he's paying attention to that horse having a bath so I'm shortening my reins make sure he's paying attention to me and you'll see he keeps speeding up a little bit that's his saddle gate because that's what I was pushing him into yesterday so that's good he's trying to do that for me but we don't want to do it yet but that's much better than that slow walk he had. I did not like that at all because he was so wobbly. So some of these horses, people think things are wrong with them, um, especially the walking horses. But see, I'm on a rocky. Any of them can do it. They'll get wobbly if they get too slow and lazy. So if you're walking the trails and you're always slow and lazy and they didn't trip in the beginning, but now they're tripping, that's usually it. Is that the horse is just being lazy and they're just dragging their feet and not picking them up. Okay. But of course he probably wouldn't be as trippy as a walking horse because he has a shorter stride and picks his feet up higher. He already knows that he lives down here. So he's trying to go slower here. And he's just not sure of his job yet and that's totally normal. So I'm going to do the serpentine. So I do want to bend him back and forth because as he bends, he bends but then he wobbles. So I want him to bend, move forward. So the lazy ones, you're trying to make them move out. Fast ones, you're trying to slow down some. Okay? No horse is perfect. They're all work in progress. Good boy. Okay. So now we're going to start going around. So I'm going to speed him up. He's on the trotty side, and I watched him when he was loose. He gates much better with his head up. He's built downhill, so I want to bring his head up because we want to try to elevate his front end if we can. Now there is a little back and forth motion in here, isn't there? You probably see the camera going back and forth. So what I'm going to do is sit back a little more and half halt. I'm going to keep going. Go right by the gate. And as soon as he smooths out and there's not much back and forth, I'm going to stop. Right there's pretty good. Oh. Okay. Now, um, we stop a lot in the beginning to reward the horse so they know that's the correct answer. Then we ask for more and more, but he's only been here a day. So I stop a lot in the beginning, say yes, that's what I want, so they know, and then I go off and do it again. And then you ask for more and more 
all the time. You don't just keep stopping after three steps. So with everything, you start slow, you add on, you make progress, okay? Now, if I wait too long with him, he's gonna fall asleep. So we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna pick up, you had a break, put my leg on him. He didn't move right off. So I gave him a light little tap with my stick. So this is kind of his, oh, now he goes in the saddle gate. Now that's smoother, but I'm gonna ask for more steps. You'll see I'm keeping his head kind of up level with my horn or a little bit above it. Right there was good. Oh, good job. So he's all about rest. So if I rest when he does the right thing, he's more likely to do it more often. Then over time, there won't be so much rest. So I'm taking another break. So now I made it like halfway around before I stopped. Um, I said this before, he's built downhill. So we wanna bring him up. We wanna get his hind quarter engaged and underneath him. So with this horse, we don't wanna bring his head down. He's on the trotty side. If we bring his head down, he's gonna be more on his forehand and he's gonna be heavier. And this is the hard part with gated horses because we do things opposite of some of the other uh, disciplines. You know, you want their head all tucked in and look pretty. Well, that doesn't work with some of these. Depends if they're trotty, pacey, if they're uphill, built downhill, how they're built. So with him, he's trotty. I gotta bring his head up. He's heavy on his front end. I gotta bring his head up. I got to get his back end underneath him to engage himself and that'll help to elevate his back in time and build up some muscles. When he's loose, he can trot all day long. That's good for him. Poles, get him paying attention. He's kind of lazy out there too and plays games. So he's one that he needs a job. He needs to know he has to do it. Otherwise, he's just going to goof around. He's not mean. He's not bad, but he plays around a little bit. Like, do I really have to? Okay, so now I'm going to go all the way around. So watch, I'm going to shorten up immediately put my leg on and kiss that's going to be my cue for him to go because not a lot of people can cluck so here he's a little bouncy not bad so i'm going to half alt release half alt release half alt release half alt release i'm pushing with my leg at the same time good job buddy no don't stop so see i'm not stopping that time i said he was good but i'm not stopping here he's a little kind of back and forth so half alt release half alt release little tap of the stick because we're getting by the gate and he's thinking he's going to stop there that's all really he's a little tough for good luck don't stop at that gate now he's smoother keep going but every time i talk he thinks he can stop so i'm just going to talk all day don't stop till they're smooth right there's perfect oh good boy so you see he stops on a dime he gets a little crooked he puts his butt to the right so i'm going to correct that too that was pretty good okay so I'm gonna go around one more time, but you saw that and I don't wanna waste the battery. So we went all the way around. He went right off when I kissed him. He stayed pretty good. And then he actually tucked his head in a little bit, but I popped it back up. Why did I do that? He was gating pretty well. And he said, I can carry my head in for you if you want. And I said, no, because when you do that, you get heavy. So even though you're light now, it's gonna be a fight going back and forth. So right now, I just want his head up. One thing at a time, not two things, or they get confused. So now he gets a little break. We're gonna go the other way. I'm staying off the rail because this horse likes to get crooked. And so I'm teaching him to stay straight and go forward because he likes to go slow and get crooked. So I usually do the opposite of what they want to do. So if you have a Rocky like this, because there are some lazy ones out there, your problem, if they won't go forward, is when they don't believe you, too, you gotta get after them. And you gotta be a good enough rider that you're gonna make them go and make them do the right thing. The trotty ones, you usually have to bring their heads up ones you might have to bring it down you kind of have to play around it might have to go up and tuck their head in so you just see but you ride all these horses a little bit different if you're trying to get the gait you know and depending on the breed they're built different so i ride the rockies different than i ride the walking horses i ride the walking horses different than i ride the fox trotters each breed is a little bit different if you ride them all the same guess what you'll probably get all the same gates that's why some people you'll see and all the horses are racking sure it's a gate but that's the only gate they know how to get with all those horses so I, I, good for me i worked with horrible gated horses to start <laughs> and i had all different breeds so i learned how to get the best out of each one not everybody can do that and for me it was horrible in the beginning i didn't get to ride any nice gated horses but now they're all nice because i make them all nice and i learned a lot so if you have a bad one don't worry about it it's going to teach you a lot you're going to get better and what do you know, maybe you'll be a trainer later on because, uh, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. So you people are going to have to take over at some point. Just don't take my job at the moment. Wait <laughs> until I retire. OK, so let's go the other way. So guess what? If I let him just walk off. Yeah, let's be a turtle. OK, he's very slow. I'd rather ride the turtle. So let's shorten up. Let's get his head up a little bit. 
get a little half halt. You ready? So every time I give that little kiss, I give him a little tap with the stick because I want that to be the cue. Now this is a little rough, a little back and forth, so I'm going to bring his head up, tap, tap, tap with the stick. That's much smoother. See how I talked to me? Slow down. Oh, ah, ah. Going. He tried to stop again. Ah, ah. I gotta bring his head up. There we go. Oh. So he brought his head down. It wasn't anything bad, but he wasn't as comfortable. It wasn't as smooth. She wants him really smooth. So I'm gonna have to bring his head up because that's how he gates the smoothest for the while. And again, if you're gating with their head up, what's that do? It inverts their back, makes their muscles not so good, you know? And so you counteract that by lunging them or running them around and trotting them, making them go over poles. So they're using different muscles and just not these muscles because, you know, we don't want them inverted all the time. So here we go, shorten up. He's like, what? That was a short break. Give a little half all so you pay attention. Let's give our little kiss. Little tap with the stick, here we go. So his head's above the horn. You need some kind of marker so you know how high to get their head. This is pretty good. He's staying straight. Look, we're heading right towards that fence. You stare at a part of the fence, like the post, so you know you're staying straight. Keep going. I'm saying that so you guys know he's slowing down. He's still good. Now I'm staring at the post in the middle of the metal fence. We're not talking to the dogs there. Keep going. So I'm going to go further. He seems like a memorizer one that stops in the same place so we don't want to do that there he's a little heavy so i'm going to get his head up tap 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 there he's light so now i'm going to stop and if you gotta poop you better go because we're going to go off in a minute so i don't know if he has to go to the bathroom doesn't look like it but that's what he feels like when he's slowing down like that okay you got to go around one more time so i want to push i want to make them stronger and this is his little saddle gate so after this i am going to go faster so let's shorten up. Remember, the lazy ones will fall asleep. Don't stay there too long. Enough to get a break, but not so long. They think they're done with work or it's going to be a fight. So get his head up a little half out. What do you know? He went off by himself. He's smooth. So I'm not giving any half outs right now. Now I can feel his hindquarter losing it a little bit. It just feels rougher. So half out, sit back. Half out, sit back. Half halt. Now he slows down my dog, so I'm going to tap him all the way by my dogs. We're not stopping by them. Now his head's going down, so I'm bringing it up. Uh-uh. Not going to stop in the same place. Keep going. Get his head back up. You see, I'm up, and then I put it back down. Don't hold it. It'll tap the head back. Oh, good boy. Okay, now he gets another break. Okay, but memorizers, you got to change things up because they'll stop in the same place if you keep doing that. So you keep changing where they get their little break. So they keep wanting to go to a different spot. They're like, maybe she'll stop here. Maybe she'll stop there. Okay, so he gets break, then we'll go faster. So now I got the other camera on too. And so now we're trying to do his faster gait. He's getting a little break here and we're going to go off in a couple of seconds. How about now? And he's getting tired. So we're going to go forward. Okay, we're gonna half halt, sit back, bring his head up. I don't expect a lot of speed, but I'd like to get more. This is pretty smooth. I can't stop. Even if he's good, I can't stop by the gate. This is hard when they're trotty and you're in an arena because it makes them trottier. Keep going. Every time he wants to stop, I'm not going to stop. Okay, that was pretty good. Now, this is hard. This is his second day. I know, you don't got a lot left in you. So. That's it, that direction. Yeah, we only went a couple times around, but now I'm gonna go the other way. You can't expect them to gate when they haven't been doing it really long periods of time, and then doing a deep footing where it's difficult, use muscles he hasn't used. Otherwise, he's really gonna fight me when I bring him back in here, because he's gonna hate it. So I have to make it somewhat pleasant. So just a couple of times around. Okay, now we're gonna go the other way. Now you see his head's always naturally below. Okay, so I'm gonna half halt, sit back, pick his head up. 
two blocks. Kiss this. It's a little bouncy. Not fault, really. Not fault, really. A little tap with the stick by the gate. Bad. I think it could be better. You see, as soon as I talk, he starts me. There he's good. Oh, but as soon as I talk, he's like ready to stop. Okay. And again, if he was taught to uh, stop uh, when you're breathing, then that's fine. So I'm going to do one more time around and that's it. So lazy horses, you don't want to work them for hours. They're going to hate you. They're not going to do it. And they're going to do more stubborn stuff. You just come out and go, hey, you just run around a couple times. I'm good with that. And the next time you go, hey, you run around three times, I'm good with that. And the next time, hey, you run around five times. Hey, you run around 10 times. Hey, you run around 20 times. And the horse is like, what happened? Why do I gotta run around 20 times? Because that's what you gotta do, but there's less fight. If you come out and go, hey, let's run around 20 times. They're like, up yours, I'm not doing that. So slow, everything's slow, gradual. Okay, let's do it again, then you get to quit. Okay, so a little half I'll tell him I'm gonna do something, kiss twice, sit back. Yeah, you know, Vicky's already picked that up. He already knows that he's supposed to do this gate then. That's a little, it's smooth, but a little back and forth. So I'm going half halt, half halt. And as I touch him with that half halt, I touch him with my legs. So half halt leg at the same time. Not hard, just enough to keep him going. Around, I don't think we got it on the camera. So normally I'd quit, but we're trying to get on the camera for mom. So where it's deep, like here, this is harder for him. I expect I said harder, not stop. Because <laughs> it makes him try here. So when the camera's not on, I ride on the rail when I'm doing this faster gate. I keep stopping because I keep talking. Good boy. Now I don't stop till he's smooth, okay? Then I stopped. So, pretty good. He's getting tired because he is getting choppier. He was smooth for a little bit the other direction. He's actually very smooth, but not as smooth as she wants, so that's what we're trying to get. So, that's it. And now you've seen another Rocky, right? And this guy's beautiful, big, thick neck and all that, lots of big muscles. But the way he needs to gait, he does have to invert himself and bring his head up. So. Yes, so that's a, against a lot of what English people and Western people have learned. And that's why the gated horses, sometimes you just putting their head in the wrong place and riding them wrong. They fix it, they gate just fine. All right, good luck out there. I'm gonna show you a saddle gate first. Just gonna do that once going by, and then after that, we're gonna try to start doing more of a fast rack, but we're not gonna go many times around. I don't think he's in shape enough to handle it. Even though he's been doing trails, engaging themselves holding that gate is difficult.
hard for me to walk in this sand. It's hard for them to move in it. We've been in a couple of different bits. I rode him yesterday in a miler, and I really had to keep popping his head up because the milers bring their heads down, and I want his head up. So I put him in a wonder bit. It's also called the gag bit. They're loose rings, so they can't lean on it. it. Helps to elevate their head. So if you have a trotty horse, these bits usually work pretty well. There's many different mouthpieces to play around. Some horses like the snaffle kind of mouthpiece, which is what's in his mouth. Some horses hate that one, and so you get something with a dog bone or a moon shade or something else in the middle, where it's three jointed instead of two jointed. Okay. So the bits do help you. It's not one bit, one horse. It's what bit works for that horse. Does he put his tongue out? Because then you got too much tongue pressure. Is he trying to put his tongue over the bit? That's too much tongue pressure. Is that just a bad habit he learned? Could be. That's what you got to figure out. And then, is he putting his head down too low? Is it too high? Is he leaning on his front end? Is he gauging pretty well? Um, if you got the horse and they're in some bit and they're gating well, stick with that. Stick with that until you figure out more of this gated stuff and understand. Then you can change. strong bit is okay as long as you're very soft with your hands and you're not injuring the horse. So he did very well. He's going to get better and you'll get to watch his progress.